fellow explorers, we are in Redondo Beach this weekend. The Traveling Princess and I are having a super great time here on the sand. We just woke up from the Shade Hotel, which we walked like 15 minutes this way from our hotel right here. Had a super great breakfast on the balcony. I'm gonna show you more of this hotel later. What are you gonna see in this video? Coming along with us on our weekend here, you're gonna see the beach. You're gonna see Los Angeles. We're gonna go check out the Grammy Museum. You're gonna see the Redondo Beach Pier. You're gonna see the Traveling Princess playing with sand toys that she's trying to find more of right now. You're gonna see everything we eat. The Traveling Princess, she is hungry. She wants to eat. These are some of her favorite snacks right here. These green onion crackers that we'll be snacking on in just a moment. One thing you're gonna see us eat, you're gonna see us eat a sea urchin tomorrow from the Redondo Beach Pier, which is pretty good, so come along with us. So the Traveling Princess was just telling me earlier that one of her favorite things about this beach is just how family and baby friendly it is. Redondo is a pretty chill beach, relaxing, great place to build sand castles, eat your crackers. The sandy beach goes for a couple miles south of this pier, and then on the other side of the pier where our hotel is, it's the marina on that side. You can do lots of water sports over there. We saw people paddle boarding this morning and some people getting ready to go out on a Venetian gondola. So we're on our way to downtown Los Angeles now, driving on the 110 freeway. Redondo Beach is just 20 miles from downtown LA, and one of the things I like about driving on the 110 is it always reminds me of the movie La La Land. This is where the scene from La La Land where they danced on the freeway was shot. Actually, if you wanna to get to that exact spot from Redondo Beach, you take the 405 North to the 105 East, and then the carpool lane brings you on to the 110, and from that ramp, you can get the great views of downtown Los Angeles that they saw in the movie. You can't stop, but you can see it while you're driving. I will point out that if you wanna take the carpool lanes on the 110, you actually need one of these fast track devices that you can say how many people in your car or pay for it if you're less than two. The carpool lane really does help you blow past traffic because it's separate from the rest of the freeway. It goes up on those second levels, and so this is really a great way to get in downtown Los Angeles. First stop in downtown Los Angeles, lunch. There's a lot of great place to eat in downtown LA, and since we're heading to the Grammy Museum just a couple blocks away, we found this place called Pizza Sociale that has Neapolitan-style pizzas. Pizzas like they would make in Naples. They hand toss the dough, they bake it in their 600-degree pizza oven. What do we have here? We have their version of a pepperoni pizza, I would call it. They call it the La Americana Picante. It's a spicy pepperoni. It's thin. Uh, mm. Mm. It's spicy, it's, it, <clears throat> it's got a good kick to it. This one they call the Mama Maria pizza. And this one has some more Italian sausage pieces on it. Also a spicy pizza, I love the charring of this crust. Mmm. Mmm. This one's good too. A more complex, spicy flavor. Sausage, less pepperoni. And the Traveling Princess, she's got the little cheese pizza. Just for her. After that delicious pizza, now that our belly's full, we are at LA Live. It's kind of like a city within a city here in LA, but this is like kind of the most futuristic feeling part of Los Angeles. I always feel like I'm in some future world. But what's really cool about LA Live, why most people come here, I mean, there are a ton of restaurants to eat at here, but if you look over this way, there is the Microsoft Theater. Tons of musical acts play here at the Microsoft Theater. Just across the street from the Microsoft Theater is the Crypto.com Arena. You might know this better as the Staples Center. It recently changed names. This is where the Los Angeles Lakers play. Other sports are here too. Other big concerts that don't fit in the Microsoft Theater are here as well. And now just behind the Crypto.com Arena is the Los Angeles Convention Center. If you're coming here for a convention like Anime Expo every year, you might be at the LA Convention Center. Another really cool and unique thing in LA that we always do when we come here is find the angel wings to take pictures of it. Los Angeles, they often say, is the city of angels, and right next to the Grammy Museum, you'll find one really big set of angel wings that is really great to take a selfie with, and it gives our traveling princess wings. We always knew she was an angel. But when I say they're everywhere, even at the pizza place we ate at, they had a set of pizza angel wings. Pizza. It gives you wings. 
because we couldn't just come to take a picture of the wings on the outside without going into the Grammy Museum. And honestly, I, I have to admit, I'm a little bit embarrassed. I've lived in Southern California my whole life, and this is my first time in the Grammy Museum. It's a really neat museum, four stories, not super big. As you first come in, they've got an exhibition that tells you all about how the Grammy Award itself has evolved. And I was most excited about the Michael Jackson exhibition where they've got the original jacket from Thriller. It's not a big museum, but if you're a music lover, you'll definitely enjoy checking this one out. And even if you don't make it into the Grammy Museum, definitely look at the floor as you're walking around LA Live that got the Grammy Walk of Fame embedded in the sidewalk. As all good museums do, they've got a gift shop on the ground floor, which I thought was interesting. They had all these baby onesies. What do you think, maybe a Black Sabbath baby onesie for the Traveling Princess? Now that we've got our music fix and our city fix, it is time to get back to the beach. I wanna show you around our really cool hotel. You ready to go, Traveling Princess? Yeah. <laughs> he says no, she's not ready to go because she's ready for a nap that she's gonna take on our drive. After a quick 30 minute drive on those 110 express lanes, we arrived here at the Shade Hotel in Redondo Beach back again. I want to show you around the room. We've tried to make it as nice as possible again, making the bed, etc. I want to start with the bed. This bed right here, what's special about this, this isn't any bed. This is a Tempur-Pedic mattress. Oh, and it's oh so, so, it's oh so comfy. I really hate lumpy mattresses and this is really nice quality, quality mattress. The room actually has two beds. This sofa actually comes out to be a bed if you so wish, but the most amazing part of this hotel is what is out here. By the way, this is the deluxe view king suite room and out here where we had breakfast in the morning and we'll have breakfast again tomorrow morning is the view of the marina, a great table right here and you can even see down here, the people walking by, going by on their bikes. But even more amazing than that is the bathtub out here on the balcony. And it's not like a tiny bathtub. It is a big soaking bathtub that a big six foot adult like me can get into. Though probably taking a bath in it, you know, is this way. So you can look out in the marina view pretty nice. I want to show you the bathroom because it's a nice big bathroom too. And the bathroom is really quite big and nice. No bathtub in here, but there is a big glass walk-in shower, lots of room, one fixed head, and some interesting blue tiles on the ground. This whole hotel room is super nice. I really like this place. So for dinner, we're eating at Sea Level, which is the restaurant in the Shade Hotel just downstairs from our room. This on a Saturday night is quite hopping. Let me get a little bit of lemon on here. This is kind of like a seafood restaurant. They got lots of seafoody things. Let's give these oysters a try. Mm. It's a good oyster. Fresh tasting, doesn't taste seafoody, not uh, sandy quite refreshing. First dish up there, seafood linguine pasta, marinara sauce, mussels, shrimp, garlic bread, done up all nice. Mm. Hot, fresh, tasty, good seafood. This is really good. Let's dive in to the garlic bread. Crispy, warm. I like this. We've got a few more dishes coming up. Live music is also starting. Did I mention the view here is really great too? This is a pretty nice view from this restaurant looking out at the marina too. Thanks for the music, guys. Next dish is the whole Branzino. I'm not really even sure actually how to eat a whole fish like this. But the small piece I got of it was quite flavorful, juicy. And here we have the sea bass on risotto. Risotto's good. This one, definitely not as big of a dish as the Branzino. It's quite good, and I like the pesto sauce to go with it. And now you may be thinking, Chris, are you gonna eat all of this yourself? This is a family trip, so we got a few family members and the traveling princess here as well. They're all gonna help me out. Or did I help them out, actually? So after that good dinner, we're just making our way over to the Redondo Beach Pier. You can see it right over there so we can check out the sunset. By the way, the Redondo Beach Pier has two parts. If you look down that way, the first part is the International Boardwalk, which we walk on first. We'll come back here tomorrow. And then the pier, which is the part that's actually over the water. 
Now you may notice the traveling princess and I are wearing jackets now. Chris, isn't it summer? You're at the beach, shouldn't it be warm? Southern California beaches actually can get kind of chilly in the evening, so it's good jacket weather here for sunset time. Now, by the way, this thing we're crossing right here, this is the um, bicycle path. You'll see a bike come by in just a moment. The Shade Hotel rents bikes. They don't rent them, they just give them complimentary to people who are staying there. Uh, so we could have biked down here. But there's also a lot of places that rent bikes, and on this path, you can take your bike all the way up to Santa Monica, which is a really neat ride if you like biking. Charlie Princess, do you like biking? Do you want to ride all the way to Santa Monica? Yeah. No, that's these little legs. It'll be too far. She'll do it someday, though. I promise. So I said we're going to the pier to watch the sunset, and if you're gonna do that, you might actually think, go out there to watch the sunset. But you know what? It's actually a lot better to see it from right here. This is right along the bike path and the parking garage, because from here, you get the wave action, and you can see the sun setting behind the pier and the people. So this sunset spot is Traveling Princess approved. The Redondo Beach Pier after sunset has a total festival atmosphere. And what do you get at festivals in California? Funnel cakes, the quintessential California festival food. This is the one with strawberry, ice cream, whipped cream, $12.95. Mmm, hot, fresh, delicious. I asked them how late they're open tonight, Saturday night in May. They're open till 11 o'clock at night. You can get funnel cakes late in the evening. Ooh, have some powdered sugar, Traveling Princess. You ready for your funnel cake? Let's give it a try. Well, a good Sunday morning to you from the Shade Hotel. We're just enjoying our balcony here. Balcony breakfast, grab and go, pretty nice. The Traveling Princess, she really enjoyed taking a bath out here last night. She spent almost like an hour in that outdoor bathtub. Where is she right now? It sounds so quiet. She's still sleeping. So we're enjoying our hour of <clears throat> morning peace and tasty breakfast, but most of all, the view. One of our favorite California pastimes is checking out farmer's markets, and they're usually in the morning here at Redondo Beach. It's Sunday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., so after breakfast on our balcony, we came to check out the quaint farmer's market here in Riviera Village, where you can pick up fruits, vegetables, and I smell some really good Salvadorian food back there. If you're looking for fresh produce, this is where you're gonna find it strawberries picked this morning and look at these huge onions these things are huge and they've got the whole stock on them too i bet our bunny macgyver would love some of these fresh carrots after the farmer's market we wandered around riviera village the village where that farmer's market is this is like redondo beach's quaint downtown neighborhood it feels very la but in a, in a nice way a nice part of la so what's what nice la is in case you don't know what i mean this cafe right here cafe flowers and bakery. Lots of families, lots of kids walking around here Sunday morning, lots of people having brunch, lots of outdoor seating on the street. So if you're looking for just a great place to wander around, stroll, head out the shops, do that. I'm going to get run over by this car because I'm standing in the parking lot, so next scene. They even have stores like this that sell yarn, accessories, and buttons. When is the last time you've seen a yarn and button store? So after checking out of the hotel, and we were really sad about that because we love that room and the view, we came back to the Redondo Beach Pier, check out what it's like here in the daytime. And you know, the restaurants that everybody's lining up for up here are the Korean crab houses. There's a number of them. So if you like spicy Korean crab, you could check those out. We're gonna do something on the lower level. So all that pier walking has gotten me hungry. And so what am I eating? Something that doesn't look like it wants to be eaten, a sea urchin. One place that you can't miss when you come to the Redondo Beach Pier is actually just below the pier on what they call the International Boardwalk. It is quality seafood incorporated. This place is this amazingly, epically huge seafood market with super fresh seafood. The uni, they have live in a tank. They sell it by the pound right now. It's $17.99 a pound. This one is about a pound and a half. Come in here and take a look at it. You can see all the little yellow meat of the sea urchin in there. The spines, they, they were still moving. We've been taking pictures of it. But you just kind of go in here with your spoon and get your sea urchin or if you're at a Japanese sushi restaurant, they'd call it uni. So let's go ahead and give this uni a try. It tastes quite fresh. It is salty because it has like the salt water in it. And if you had like su uni at a sushi restaurant, um, depending upon where the uni was from, whether you had it in Japan or California, the ones here from California from Santa Barbara 
are known around the world to be some of the sweetest sea urchin anywhere. Sweet and salty, too. The lines for this place on a summer weekend can be epically long, and they got a few different lines, one for hot food, one for oysters, one for the sea urchin, so make sure you're in the right line when you come here to eat. This fish market is so big, they even have their own gift shop. How many fish markets do you know that have their own gift shop? Well, just further down the international boardwalk from there, and I need to turn around, make sure I'm not gonna run into anybody. There's a whole bunch more shops and restaurants here, and if you come in the daytime and you think it looks kinda dead, it's because it is kinda dead some parts of the day. The real liveliness down this way is at night. We saw it last night, it was quite hopping down here. So that uni was definitely not filling enough, but uni never is, and we didn't want to brave the lines of quality seafood because they were epic today. So we stopped over at Captain Kids. The traveling princess wants her oyster crackers. They're not oysters, but they're oyster crackers. At Captain Kids, we were able to order online from Yelp, and we didn't have to brave the lines. There are your crackers, traveling princess. What do we have here? We have a lobster bisque. Pretty good. Pretty good, creamy. We have a chicken gumbo. Spicy. We have a white New England clam chowder. Good. We have a soft shell crab plate. We'll have a small bite of this one. It goes well. I like all this. So, if you find lines of quality seafood too long, or you're just on this side of the pier, check out Captain Kids too. Before putting wheels up and getting on the road, we needed to stop and get some caffeine from the boy and the bear. This is on Pacific Coast Highway, and inside, it feels just like someplace in the Himalayas or something. I got a green tea, pomegranate green tea, that they actually make the tea here from tea leaves, which I always like. And OC Girl, she got a ice latte, which is really good. OC Girl, you definitely deserve this one. The woman behind the camera that you never see, she's working hard back there. I want to thank the really cool people at Redondo Beach Tourism for making this video possible. And if you are planning to have a beach vacation in the near future, then you'll really want to check out my video right here about 19 common mistakes that people often make on their beach vacations. Why? So that you don't make them. And fellow explorers, as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'm going to see you in that video.